Hello, hello. I hope I'm on Royce's page. Hello, everybody. I'm probably a couple minutes early, but I always have technical issues, so I wanted to jump on pretty quick. So, hello, everybody. I hope I'm on Royce's page. So, um, I am Cassandra. Hello, y'all. I'm so happy to be in this marathon. Um, I'm Cassandra Smith, and I am with uh, Pecan Porch Boutique. Um, I am actually new to going live, you guys. So I just started going live not too long ago. So, um, so we're going to try to get this done. But again, I'm Cassandra, and I'm with Pecan Porch Boutique. I am coming to you guys live from uh, Central Texas. I live in a small town um, called Mejia. It's actually spelled M-E-X-I-A, but it's pronounced Mejia. Um, and I, um, I am a retailer for, um, of course, Roy Cycle Decoupage Papers. And I also retail um, Iron Orchid Design and um, DIY Paint. So, so you guys, without further ado, we are going to get started tonight. And I actually have my little iPad over here. So hopefully I can follow any um, any questions or anything you got. Oh, hi, Tempe, Arizona. Wow, Brazil. Wow, hello, you guys. Um, so tonight we are going to be doing some decoupage. And you you guys, y'all probably, y'all probably thinking, what kind of, what's she going to be doing from that title I put on there? So anyway, y'all, I live in the country. And I like doing country bumpkin type crafts so um my first love is painting furniture but i all but when i do small things i like to do kind of craft things where i pull junk junk together and and make it into something so tonight we are going to be decoupaging onto these legs and these were actually i'm going to lift this up so you guys maybe can see this can you guys see that these are actually old table legs and they're ac actually two different kinds of table legs that I just had joined together uh, to make this flat surface here. So that is what we're going to be decoupaging on tonight. And you guys, I'm so sad to say that I did not get my new papers. I did not. Um, and I have chased down everything that looks like a box truck trying to find my papers. But I have not gotten them yet. So I'm going to be working tonight with two of the papers that are going to be retiring and that is going to be this beautiful feline here this is botanical equine and also i am going to be working with not just the equine the botanical equine but i'm also going to be working with um the buffalo check so we're going to do a little bit of layering on top of these legs. So I can tell you guys what I have done so far. I have given these legs um, two coats. Um, one of DIY's White Swan, which is a really, really white, white. Um, and, then I, and then I blended in a little bit of prairie gray over the top. So it wouldn't be too stark white. So, and if you guys can see right here on this paper on the end, I start to try to at least keep some of the wood showing so so we're going to start with that so if you guys have any questions i will try to answer them hey someone else from texas hello from texas um i will try to answer them um as i go along i'm, I'm here by myself as usual so but what i want to do is i want to take i have this little exacto knife and so i'm gonna take my exacto knife and i want to cut back a few of these little squares just in you know random random places just so that i can have the wood show through i don't know if you guys can see this right here but the wood is showing through on this side so that's where we're going to start i'm just going to take my little exacto knife and i'm just going to actually these squares make it really easy because you can follow them So I'm just going to go in different, um, you know, different places. 
I'm gonna cut some, I'm, I, I might cut in a little bit deeper or a little bit wider than others. Some I won't cut at all. And that's all just to give randomness to this, to this piece. So I've cut that one. I'm just gonna keep going. Just slicing it here and there. And my plan is actually to layer this paper. So I'm going to use this uh, buffalo check as the background. So to the botanical equine. And no, there's no rhyme or reason to why I would do that. It's just that, um, you know, I, I really enjoy the randomness of, um, even when I paint furniture, and actually you guys, I don't know if I said this already, but painting furniture is really my first love. I'm really having to get used to doing small things. Um, because, you know, everybody doesn't want to buy a big piece of furniture all the time. So, um, so, but I like, even, even when I paint my furniture, I like, you know, I like the randomness. I'm not really good, even though I see people do it and I'm always impressed, but I'm not really good at, um, at painting in really crisp, clean, clean lines. So yeah, I guess I was one of those kids in school that, that didn't stay in the lines. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut out a few more of these, you guys, and then just kind of let you see kind of how this looks. And the reason why I'm cutting these out is because uh, when I layer, when I layer the, um, the botanical equine on the top I've already kind of did a ragged edge on that one so I, I wanted a different kind of edge so so there so as you can see now I've kind of cut some out on these edges and that's gonna allow my paper I mean my um, the wood to actually show through on in some places so I think I'll do one more here and then I think that'll be enough. Because again, I'm just, I'm, I just, I didn't want to cover up the wood completely. Um, so I want to leave a little bit of that showing. And so that is why I'm just kind of cutting out these random squares. Just because I thought it would be cool. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, so now I have those cut out pretty much kind of the way I want them. And so what I've done is I have taken that uh, beautiful, um, uh, that beautiful horse, and I have cut him up into different um, pieces. So that's the horse, and I've kind of picked out the pieces that I want to use um, on the paper. So that's that really lovely stamp that's on there. And this is the um, another kind of a seal with a flower, and then these two big, really pretty flowers. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, so if I don't get you guys, if I don't see you guys, if you guys have questions and I don't see them, I will go back and take a look at them. So, but we're going to go ahead and we are going to um, get this paper on these legs. And again, these are just old table legs that I had laying around the backyard. And I actually put them all together to make kind of a flat surface. So, um, but I can tell you guys that this is really, they're really too heavy to be a tray. So, I actually have some more legs out there that I am going to um, put on the bottom of this to make an actual table. So yeah, so there's gonna be legs under the legs. Okay, so I'm gonna use Big Top tonight and my little paint pixie brush 
to adhere this paper down. And I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side. And again, y'all, I am not, I'm not one for, um, for, um, for really following rules. I mean, I listen to everybody's opinions and I, and everybody's rules on what you should do and what you shouldn't. And then I kind of adjust them a little bit. I don't want to say break them, but I kind of adjust them a little bit to, um, you know, to kind of what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and start just by laying the paper down. And I will go back later and get the under underside of these. And I can tell that my paper is already starting to wrinkle. And that's okay with me. I'm good with wrinkles. Probably because I got them. But anyway, um, I'm just going to move on. And I am going to continue to lay the paper down. And the reason why I took that knife, um, the X-Acto knife, I'm going to move this over a little bit, is so that I don't have a complete surface. You know, I don't, I don't really have a complete, my legs aren't totally covered up. And I can actually see some of the, some of these wooden legs. And yes, most people would go and they would use, um, they would use the saran wrap and they would go ahead and lay this down. But again, this is kind of a country bumpkin style. I mean, really, y'all, I'm a little bit country. I've been trying all my life to be a little bit rock and roll, but I ain't made it yet. So I'm a little bit country. So this is kind of my country bumpkin recipe for upcycling old table legs. Rather than letting them go to waste, so we'll just keep moving on through. Laying this down, and as I lay it down, I'm, I'm, I am um, making sure that I kind of put my fingers in these little creases so to kind of so that so that you'll be able to actually see the crease. Uh, you know, usually I would use the um, crystal clear chandelier um, by DIY, but I'm out of it. So Big Top works though. It works as a sealer. It works as a decoupage medium. It works. So I'm just kind of smoothing down with my hand. And again, y'all, I am, I am new to this whole live thing, honestly. Um, I just started going live on my own page, oh, maybe about a month, maybe two months ago. I just said, one day I just said, you know, heck, I'm just going to do it. So I did, and yeah, it does get a little bit easier, but I think one of the things for me is that, um, like, I don't strive for perfection on anything that I do, like on any of my projects, so if I mess up, you know, that's okay. And I think that really helped me to be able to, you know, kind of calm down and just, you know, do what I do. So, hello, Suzanne. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to keep moving with this beautiful buffalo check. Y'all, these are one of the papers that I, I never did get a chance to use. And now they're retiring. So, um, so yeah, I'm a little sad about that. But, um, I do right now still have some on my website. Um, 
And my website, you guys, is pecanporchboutique.com. But um, as you've heard some of the other creators say, if you guys are looking to buy um, any of the supplies that you see us using in the marathon, you can go to roycycle.com and look to, on the um, retail locator and find a retailer near you. It's always nice to shop at a retailer that's close to you. Um, if you can't find what you're looking for, then you're welcome to take a look on my site. All right, we're almost at the end, you guys. I really like doing these creases. There's something about creases that I like. Maybe because I grew up in the 70s. Now I'm, I'm dating myself. But you know, back then, starch was a big thing. You know how you put starch on your, on your pants before you went out on Saturday night? Did anybody do that? Child, we used up so much starch. I don't know why we thought we had to be so starched up. Okay. All right. So this is the last. Last little bit. There we have it. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on the top where these little cutouts that I did. So I can go ahead and get them to stick down. Some of these I will be, they're hanging over the edge. So you guys have seen the product, um, the, uh, process where you just take maybe a 220 grit sandpaper or you can take um, a sanding block and just um, go by and just kind of slide your, your sandpaper over that and take those edges off nice and clean. I don't know about y'all, but um, I'm not sure where everybody is... is uh, actually watching from tonight but um but again y'all i am in central texas so my hair is kind of centralized between um the two big metropolitan areas so i am about um a half hour um or maybe two hours to the north of Houston and then two hours to the south of Dallas Fort Worth so um, but again this is Texas and I'm gonna tell y'all these last few days it's been downright cold in Texas and and and, and I don't know if y'all know about Texas but, but we don't do cold we do heat so I don't know what all this four degrees and stuff whatever's going on here but um but it ain't it, you know it, it ain't for us so Whoever sent it this way, they need to get it back. Okay, so again, here's my little horse and all of the other little pieces that I cut off of the botanical equine. And so my goal is to place him in various places along the paper. So I'm thinking about, I was trying to think in my head kind of what what type of layout I want it. And as you can see, can you guys see that black background, that black and white? So can you guys see that? And you can see over in the corners where I kind of left some of the board showing on the different corners. So I think what I'm gonna do, in my mind anyway, I think I'm gonna lay this pretty pony right there. And I take one of these big cabbage flowers and lay one here. And I want to kind of balance it off. So I think I'm going to kind of lay one in this corner. And I get him in the middle. And I'm going to take this really cool stamp. 
There's something about a giant stamp that I really like. And maybe I'll put him down there. And then I'll take this little seal with the leaf. And I'll put it up there. So now I have actually five items that I'm going to lay out on this board. Using the buffalo chick as the kind of the background. So what I'm going to do though first before that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit this with this with my little dryer thing you guys so excuse the noise I'm just gonna hit it for a few minutes hopefully it won't take but a minute and hopefully you guys can still hear me and I want to kind of get this a little bit dry before I lay down my um, my pony and y'all I can see plenty of wrinkles here but that's okay I'm not worried about that wrinkles don't bother me because again I mean these are old table legs so I'm not trying to do anything crisp or clean or pristine so the wrinkles really just don't bother me at all So that's doing pretty good. Okay. So, let's see. Any questions or comments that I'm missing? Oh, it's Patty. You said 17 in the Caskill, New York? Oh, no, 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 no. Nope. Nope. Can't do it. So I think like Monday or Sunday or something, it's supposed to be like four degrees. I mean, where the rest of the numbers at? Four? That's just one number. Where the rest of them? I can't. I can't, y'all. Something happened when I got older and I just cannot do the cold. Why? Now I know why my grandmother and my great-grandmother used to sit in front of the heater you know, all wrapped up. Now I know why. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this little guy down here. I'm just going to add some more of this product. And this is Big Top that I'm using by DIY. And he's going to be, he's a little bit, long, he or she, I'm not sure what it is, but. For tonight, I'm just going to call him a he. So his ears are kind of going to kind of lay over a little bit. And again, I'm going to press him into the creases too. And lay him over like that. And get some Get some more product down. And continue to lay him down and as I lay him down I'm creasing him as well because I kind of want him just to fold into the background that's what I'm trying to do that's what I'm aiming for all right keep him moving There we go. Just kind of fold him in. When I get him down here, I'll lift this up so you guys can kind of see what this is looking like. I 
and so I'm not really worried about um, about the wrinkles again um, this is not meant to be anything really pristine pristine or this is I can kind of see this like you know in a cabin or maybe a man cave or you know something like that but but honestly I'll sit this baby right in my living room so it's, it can go anywhere in my opinion All right, well, y'all, we almost got him down. So, I'm, what, I'm gonna throw out a question. So, um, what is you guys, what are you guys' favorite technique in uh, decoupage? Is it um, the iron-on method? Or do you guys like to do it by hand? Which one is your favorite? I actually tend to like this this particular method and maybe it's just because of the therapeutic nature of it I don't know um, I do like the iron-on method but um, this is kind of fun to me so what do you guys which one do you guys like you know I need therapy uh, Colleen so I think that's why I, I like to brush on which if you guys have tried decoupage somebody likes by hand hilda you haven't tried the iron on you should watch some of uh some of royce's um videos and some of the other creatives they did a, a couple people did some iron ons uh during this live and, and it was it was great i tend to like this method again because I don't really mind the wrinkles because pretty much everything I do is like, you know, it's kind of like country bumpkin style. So the wrinkles just go right along with it. Okay, you guys, I got like two more feet, hooves, I should say, to lay down. And we are at the end. of our journey with this guy. All right. Just kind of brushing in some of the places, get them stuck down, and I'm gonna lift this up so you guys can see it. Cool, okay. All right, can you guys see that? Let me see if I can, without tearing up everything on this table, if I can stand this up so you guys can see. This is quite heavy, y'all. Seriously, if it falls. Can you guys see that? So that's kind of how he's looking. He's kind of folding into this background here, which is kind of what I wanted. Okay, let me see if I can put it back down. Like I said, this is heavy, so this is not gonna be a, a tray, for sure. Okay, so we got him on there. He's laying down pretty good. He's kind of blended into that background. And so, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our, our flower on. And again, I think I should put one here maybe one here maybe one here or maybe one here what do you guys think what do you guys think the big flower should go one up in the corner for sure because i have enough room to put him there what do you guys think we're gonna go ahead and put him up in this corner here yeah okay
And again, y'all, I really wanted to be doing the new papers too. I did. But the FedEx people had other, had something else going. Y'all, I done chased every truck that come through this neighborhood. I even chased down the, I even chased down the truck that was going over to the building supply because I thought it was FedEx and I thought he should have been coming over here. But it wasn't. So I'm tired from chasing the trucks down. Okay, let me get me some more um, Big Top here. And we're going to keep it moving. And the whole thing about this piece, y'all, is the creases. That's really what gives it this, um, the uniqueness, is that I'm folding the paper into these creases. And some of the creases are a little bit wider. I mean, there's nothing really uniform on this at all. Okay, there's one flower, one big cabbage flower. I think I'm going to go ahead and put on this little stamp. Isn't this the greatest, y'all? This paper was so cool. I don't know why I didn't get a chance to use it. Let's see. Oh, somebody says, Dorothy said um, I would overlap the roses in one corner. Ooh, Dorothy, that's a good idea. So Dorothy's suggestion is to overlap the roses in one corner. I'm liking that, Dorothy. Thank you. I think I'll take your advice. So we're going to actually overlap this rose. with this rose. I'm just going to make it a little bit, I'll make it kind of hang over the side a little maybe. Thank you, Dorothy. That was a good idea. I like it. See, that's why it's good to have audience participation. Sometimes the audience can give you better, the audience can give you better advice than Karen, you're looking forward to trying the iron-on method? Yeah, I do. I mean, I've done it, and I, it is really a good method. It really is. Um, that uh, Sonia says it would make the bench, this piece would make a pretty back to a bench. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, this is a good background, this buffalo chick. With this, um, because um, the botanical equine is kind of like a grayscale, almost it really doesn't have much color it kind of blends in really well with the with the buffalo chip because it's kind of almost iridescent um so you can kind of see through it and so that is what kind of That's what kind of gives it this, this really cool see-through feature. So as I'm putting it down, you can kind of see through it and see into the back of the, of the background of the buffalo chick. Okay, so Dorothy, thank you for that suggestion. Okay, you guys, so now I think I'm going to go with this, um, with this um, big stamp here, and I'm going to put it, I believe up in this corner here. No, I think I'm going to put this leaf, this um, this leaf with the seal up in the corner. And 
And again, y'all, I'm not really following any rules when I'm doing this. I'm just kind of going with it. And just just creasing it in to these creases that gives it this really cool folded look all right okay there we go that's in so now I have um, one more and that's this big stamp and it also kind of has that green background, kind of like that uh, seal that I just put on. So I'm going to put it down here in this corner. I'm just kind of put it kind of a little bit askew. What does that word really mean, askew? What I mean when I say that, I don't know why I decided to use that word, but I'm just gonna put it a little bit catty corner. I like that word better, catty corner. I'm just kind of actually using my brush now rather. There we go, you guys, it's all on there. Let's see if I can turn it around so that you guys can see it. I'm gonna, his ears aren't really down. And I will put some on that. Let's see if I can turn it around so y'all can see. Can you guys see that? So it's coming out really neat. I like it. So it kind of has this folded look. And actually, while I have it sitting up here, I think I'll put a little under his ear so to lay down. There we go. So there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of hit it again with this little, my little dryer here. Kind of give it, get it to dry up a bit. While I check to see if there's any Oh, hello. Hi, Amy from California. Hey, what kind of weather do you guys have in California? Sunny and 70, I hope. Uh, Barbara says, practicing the wet method, but it still frustrates me, but I'm not giving up. Good for you, Barbara. Don't give up. Uh, Shirley likes the wet method, too. Uh, Linda, what did I say I was putting it on? Uh, what did you say you were putting this on? This is, uh, these are old table legs, Linda. Old table legs. That I had out there on my porch. And I decided I wanted to do something with them. And this is what I did. Dry this off. Let's see. Um, yeah, table legs, Linda. These are old table legs. And it's actually two different kinds. So I think somebody brought me an old table and it was falling down, but the legs were still in pretty good shape. So as I do. I tore the legs off and I kept them. And 
and I joined them together. And I have another uh, set of four legs out there that I'm going to use to put on the bottom. So it's going to be legs on legs. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shirley says, I like the wet method. Let's see. Let me go to the bottom here. Uh, let's see. Might be cool to add some leather strips. Oh, that would be cool. Who's the, how do you pronounce your name? Time? That would be cool. I like that idea. She says might be cool to add some leather strips uh, for the reins of the horse. Although, he looks like he doesn't want to be tamed, though. He looks pretty wild. Yeah, it's very sturdy. It is very sturdy. Hi, Laura. How are you? So, yeah, you guys, this... I tell you what. You don't have to be worried about nobody having nothing like handcrafted pieces is that no two are alike and you know nobody's gonna have the same thing and I don't know about you guys but I never really was big on having like you know how you can go in the store you can get the whole living room set and they have it all laid out for you I don't care that, that much for that I like coordinating and mixing and matching things And so that kind of shows up in, as well in my um, in my painting of my furniture and any kind of crafts that I do. I like to take things that people wouldn't think that would go together and actually put them together. Okay. All right, you guys. So this is kind of what it looks like. You guys see that? Kind of dry. Now what I want to do is, just as a little added um, something, it's pretty dry. I want to take my, um, just so it would be more, um, just so I'm able to handle it a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a piece of my stamp. I'm gonna come mm -hmm. around here, you guys. And I am going to, I'm going to use a little bit of my DIY black velvet. Just going to, I'm going to shake, better shake it up a little first. And I am going to just get a little bit on my plate, not much. Because I don't need much. And I'm going to take my brayer. Can you guys see me or am I out of frame? So I just put a little bit on my plate. And I'm just going to take my brayer. And you know, you know, you don't have to use a brayer. You could use a sponge. I've seen people use makeup sponges or whatever you want to use. And I'm going to put a little on my, um, on my stamp here. And one of the reasons why I cut this up like this, not only to make it easier to handle, but, um, you know, you don't want to get those um, hard edges, you know, if you're using the stamp. So uh, when you cut it up, you don't get those hard edges. So anyway, I just rubbed a little bit of my, um, my paint, my little black, little black dress over this, and I'm going to just kind of give it a little bit of crackle, you know, just a little bit. Hey, sister. Okay, so, can you guys see? I'm just going to lay this down here, press it in a little, not really worrying too much, lift it up, and 
just to give it a little bit of uh, put a little bit up here in the corner by these roses I love this crackle stamp and since I have paint on here I'm gonna go over here and put some here and get a little bit more mm -hmm. And it actually, it's really showing up really well on the, um, on the black and white. And it's giving just a little bit of flavor to my pretty little pony here as well. Without really taking anything away from it. So I'm not putting it like completely on him. I'm just kind of putting it kind of a few crackles on him. And then um, just, you know, random places. If you guys have never worked with these IOD stamps, I mean, they are addicting. Really, they are. Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple more in a couple more places, and then I think I'm going to be done with the with the crackle. But I kind of like the way it's coming out. And I'm actually using paint, but you could actually use the inks. Um, IOD has uh, the inks that you, um, that you can actually use as well. But tonight I'm just using the paint. There we go. Let's see. Maybe a little bit up here in this corner. So in the places where I let the wood show, it's kind of really pretty that I'm I'm adding a little bit of crackle in those spots on the wood. Just kind of gives it a little bit more of a old feel. All right. And again, I don't really want to get like a lot on the pony, just in a few spots. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up and hopefully you guys can see the crackle that I added. Can you guys see? I'm not sure if you guys can see the crackle, but hopefully you can. I've added it in different spots and it just kind of gives it a little bit more of, um, I don't know, a little bit more oomph, whatever oomph is. Okay, so there we go. And I'm just going to kind of give it a little... A little dry. And that crack, y'all, the crackler stamp is one of my favorites. I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but this one is one of my favorites. It is the best stamp to do um, a, a faux finish with or to just to add to your, um, to um, a painted piece, background, um, gives it a, a bit of a textured look. It's just really a, a really, really good stamp. Kind of an all-around stamp. All right, you guys. There we go. So now that is pretty dry. Maybe wet in a few, a little, little damp in a few spots, but for the most part, it's pretty dry. So let's see, how am I on time? I am at 50 minutes. So the last thing I want to do for my little project is I want to take my X-Acto knife and actually where I have creased this paper, I actually want to use my X-Acto knife to actually cut in between those creases. So here we go.
And because these creases are so big, it's really easy for me to glide my knife straight through. So I'm just cutting through all the creases. And then what I will do, because um, I'm running out of time, I will go back, I will fold these in, and I will take some more of my um, Big Top, and I will lay them down. So by doing this, it gives a little bit of a look like um, each piece was put on individually. Even though we know that it wasn't. All right. But it gives that illusion that each piece was put on individually. And I don't know, you guys, I got this X-Acto knife on Amazon. And it's much better than the razor blade that I was using. Okay, so again, I'm just slicing through my... Um, my seams here. And the whole reason I'm doing this is to give my piece a little bit of a feel like it was individually, that each piece was laid down individually. And I wanted to maintain the integrity also of these legs, um, since they are individual legs. So by doing this, you can tell that these are individual pieces, the legs themselves. And now my image looks also like it is individual pieces. And this is my last one. And thankfully they were kind of wide so now that is it so I have now sliced through the entire piece so I'm gonna hold that up and let you guys see it see if you can tell can you tell now that I've separated those hopefully you can see that where I've gone through and I've just separated each one and so what I'll do now is I'll go back with the um, with my big top and I will go through and put more big top in the seams here and make sure the paper is adhered down into those seams. So there we go you guys let's see um, I have about six minutes looks like let's see if anybody has a question. Oh thank you Corrine thank you Thank you, Royce. Okay, you guys. I um, didn't get a chance to look to see how many questions there were um, or to answer all of them, but thank you guys for joining me. Again, I'm Cassandra. I am with Pecan Porch Boutique. You guys can find any of this stuff that I've used tonight on my website at pecanporchboutique.com. And until we see each other again, our saying is always for you to bud, bloom, and be unique. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.